What's happening, YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am having a great morning. I plan on having a great day. And that's because I am continuing with uh, the 55-gallon aquascape here. Now, uh, I do have a part two that will be coming up uh, in a couple days um, involving the second half of the substrate. But before I even get to that, I'm, I'm making an underwater forest using birch wood. Um, which is completely safe uh, for, you know, your water and inhabitants and all of that. So, um, first I've got to put the wood in there, figure out the height, and then what to cut it to. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. Got my marker. Got a piece of wood in there already. This right here, it's a piece of cholo wood. I cut it to size to uh, fit the, uh, the width of the glass perfectly. Um, it's not secure yet. I just wanted to make sure see, it, 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 it slips around, but I'll show you how to attach it. Now, with the birch wood, yes, there is a lot of flaking on here. Um, I'll, I'll be cleaning that up. You can clean that up however you want, but I have it flush now with the bottom. I don't want it to obviously go this high. I have to have a light go across here, so I can't have it any taller than that. So what I'm going to do is take my marker to the link that I can have it max. Make myself a mark here with my permanent marker. All right, so that piece is good. Then my second piece. All right. That piece is good. And, ooh, this one's kind of cool. Yeah, that should look awesome. All right, I have more to go, but you get the point. Now, um, on your birch wood, uh, like this right here, it has a. Uh, see if you can see that. That's just like fungus. I'm going to clean that up. Um, you know, I do have a wood saw, and then I'm going to shave all the excess, you know, pieces like this off. We'll get to that part later. I'm going to cut this short, cut these down to size, show you how to clean them up a little bit. Uh, before we put them in there, there is going to be a way to attach it because I do have to attach it to glass. So um, I will be back shortly once I've sliced all this up. And also, I did have a couple new subscribers, actually a bunch, but only two showed up in an email uh, and two commented. Uh, first shout out goes to Caleb. Hey man, thanks for the comment. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And then the second shout out goes to Mona Mead. Thank you so much for your lovely comment. I do appreciate it. I'm happy you've joined us. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing both of you around for future videos. Uh, I do videos at least once a week, sometimes every other week. It just depends on how many projects I got going on. But let me go cut this down to size. And uh, we will pick up again once I start getting ready to attach it to the glass. All right. See you shortly. Hey, welcome back. So we are still dealing with birch wood. Uh, this piece I cut down to the height of the aquarium and I thought of something very simple to get the excess, um, you know, uh, scraps like this off. Uh, very simple. You know, you can pull the big pieces off yourself, but I got a potato peeler and I'm simply just going through See the pieces flying off? Yeah. So it's going to take all those extra chunks. And it, it's actually okay if there's a few pieces on there that over time just kind of dissolve and drop to the bottom of the tank. It's not going to hurt your tank. Uh, wood releases tannins, which are very beneficial for your aquarium. They make the water slightly acidic, which uh, kills viruses, harmful bacteria, things of that nature. So, um, Anyway, so it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, just obviously pulling off the stuff that, you know, is, is uh, going to fall off initially once you start submerging it. And it still looks good whenever you're doing it like this. 
um, you know, natural piece of wood. And uh, yes, I will be planting stuff to it. Uh, this one I cut to size. I haven't cut them all, but like, you know, this one I haven't even started yet. So you can, you can see how crusty it is. And then I'm just going to, see, just keep, keep shaving around it back and forth until I get all those major pieces off. And it doesn't disrupt it and make it look smooth like it's not a natural piece of wood. Because that's what I want. I want it to look as natural as possible. So, you know, when I'm done with my aquascape, it truly looks like, you know, a piece of nature. Just an underwater forest. And yeah, it, it's time consuming. I have several pieces I got to do. I have to cut four more pieces of wood. But all in all, I'm going to have about six logs in there. So it'll look like six trees. Um... I got a couple ideas of what kind of plants I want to attach to them. I think a Nubius would be great because it'll grow a rhizome along it with leaves coming off, you know, so, but that's how we clean it up to cut it down to size. Uh, you know, th you think it speaks for itself, but just in case, yes, you may want to saw so you can, you know, get a nice flat edge because we're going to have to attach it to some glass. So that's how I've been cleaning up the wood using a potato peeler. You may have uh, other tools that you can use, but this is something I just found lying around the house that works great. So uh, then I'm going to need to clean this uh, with some water and I will get back to you when I'm done cleaning up all this wood and we'll go from there. See you in a bit. Hey, what's happening everyone on YouTube? My uh, son wanted to help me clean up some of this birch wood. So uh, let's check him out in action. So, uh, what are you doing there with the bir with the uh, birch wood, man? Um, taking off the skin of it. Right. And uh, wh why are we removing that thin skin off of the wood? Because then, uh, when it's in the tank, uh, it'll come off. Right, it'll get soggy and then just fall off into the tank and then you're constantly having to pick pieces out. So, what kind of a theme are we doing on this giant 55-gallon tank? Yep, underwater forest. And you're doing a great job with that wood. We don't have to get all of it, you know, just any obvious pieces that are just kind of sticking sticking up. We just shave off. And then uh, we're soaking it. And uh, we are soaking it in tank water. Do you know why I'm soaking it in uh, water from one of the tanks? To cycle it? Right, to help cycle it. Um, so they're not in tanks. I just removed water from some of the other tanks and put them in a bucket over there. And, uh, yeah, it'll help the wood absorb some beneficial bacteria and all of that. Here's here's my other son, Alex. Alex, what are you wearing, man? I wear the Infinity Gauntlet. If you snap your fingers, will it get all the bark off this wood? I don't know. Well, give it a shot. Nothing happened. Oh, well, all right. Whatever. Okay, I guess you're stuck using that knife, man. All right. Okay, so when we start attaching this stuff into the tank, uh, we will start the video up again. All right, welcome back. This will be the last part of the birch wood underwater, you know, ecosystem forest thing I'm building with the birch wood. So, you know, we got it chopped up, cleaned up, shaved off anything that was rotten or mold, and then we soaked it for about 14 hours in uh, dirty tank water. And then to attach it to the glass, um, I actually used uh, gel Gorilla Glue. Uh, this is the only type of glue that is safe to use. I mean, it's not the only brand that makes it. You just need to make sure that it's gel. And then it says uh, that the ingredient has uh, siren crolite in it. I may have mispronounced that, but you'll know it when you see it. Just make sure it says gel. You're on the right path. And yes, this type of glue does stick to wood and stick to glass. That's for added support. Uh, this is my son, Alex. He, he wanted to, to hang out. Um, so... Uh, the reason why I didn't put any substrate in first and then just stick those logs in the dirt, I've done that before and I know what happens. The you, Logs he heavy like this are not completely vertical. And eventually what will happen is gravity will take over and they'll start to lean and lean and lean. And of course with the motion of the water, that helps push them and eventually they just fall over and kick up a pile of dirt. And that can release some uh, nasty uh, ammonical uh, gases that build up in your substrate and kill all your fish, a whole whole types of disasters. So yeah, I just put a tiny bit of this on the bottom of each one of these 
I let them sit for 48 hours. Uh, they're all secure now, so they're good to go. And uh, after I was done soaking them for 14 hours, I then took them out and any pieces of wood that got like extremely soggy or were or started to peel off, I then shaved that off too, so I didn't have to worry about those pieces falling off into the tank. So this is as clean as they're going to be for right now. And uh, while I'm here, we're also before we wrap things up, we're going to do a product review. I'm on a budget, so I needed a really long LED light. So I ordered this uh, Hyger. It's a 48-inch long LED uh, full-spectrum light that's 24-7 mode, um, you know, with a timer and all of that. And it was only 66 bucks. I was shocked um, for a light that size. So I'm going to tilt this up. I do kind of have it like jerry-rigged, like I said. Uh, just hanging by some rope, but Alex, will you go turn off the light and let's see how powerful this light is. And I'm going to walk over here and turn it on. Uh, kill this light too. Total darkness. Close that door so we have nothing but darkness. Alright, and I can adjust the brightness. Ooh! Yeah! Yeah! Uh, I've, I've learned in the past I'm not keeping my lights directly on top of the tanks anymore. Water just splashes up on them and it gets dirty and I just don't like that. So um, Let's see if we can change the colors, see what kind of colors we got here. Ooh! Yeah! What else we got? Alright! We don't need this board here anymore. Yeah, look at how pretty that is. That's what I'm talking about. Orange, yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, bro, will you flip that light back on, please? All right, and like I said, it's got a timer, and it, it's I can program it to rise and set just like the sun, and I don't have to do anything, which is awesome. 66 bucks was a steal for... For that and it's a uh, obviously you can tell it's a great light um, I'm happy no going out spending three hundred dollars on a you know 40 inch fluval spectrum Wi-Fi light don't do that it's a waste of money I have had great experience with night crew uh, Hyger and then another brand I don't know it's foreign it's called it's all acronyms like AFLR something anyway but Thanks for watching. Um, I hope that if you decide you want to do an underwater forest, you'll take uh, my suggestion into consideration. And I've given you all the tools uh, needed to treat wood um, for your tank if you want to do that. And of course, once this aquascape is finished, I'll make another video and show you what it looks like fully dirted. And I'm going to carpet it and have some plants growing on the wood and all that. So thank you for so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Alex, say goodbye. Goodbye, YouTubers. Bye. Bye-bye. Ha-ha. All right. Thanks again. And uh, like always, I hope you're having a fantastic day. And if you're not, get up and do something about it. Thanks.